welcome once again to this series of lessons in introduction to elementary physics. This is lesson two of the topic vectors, a continuation of lesson one. So do well to subscribe to this channel, hit the notification button and the like button so that you can always get alerted anytime new lessons are updated on this channel. All right, so this is a continuation of our previous lesson, uh, part C of lesson one. If you have not viewed part C of lesson one, do well to view it as the link to it is given in the description of this video. Okay, so in our previous lesson, we started looking at the concept of the resultant vector. Then we said that there are two important factors that will guide us on how to obtain the resultant of a set of vectors acting at a point. These two factors are, number one, the number of vectors, whether they are two, three, four, five, six. And then the second factor is their relative angles or direction with respect to each other. So you can have two, three, four, five, six n vectors acting at a point, how do we get their resultant? Okay, we are going to begin with a case of two vectors. Okay, now consider two vectors, P and Q, acting at a point to give a resultant R. When two vectors are acting at a point, they can act in different ways. First of all, they can be acting in the same direction, pointing in the same direction, or they can point in opposite direction, or they can be inclined at an angle to each other, which makes them neither to be in same direction or opposite direction. So we're going to take these cases one after the other and see how we are going to attend to, uh, or to attempt to find the resultant. Case number one, if the vectors are acting in the same direction, then the resultant R is given by P plus Q. So you simply add them. All right. So let's say this is our point of action. And this is the first vector acting in uh, towards the right, vector P. And then the second vector acting towards the right again, vector Q. So these two vectors are going to create a resultant, which we are representing by this red line. And the resultant is, is simply equal to the sum of the vectors. Just summing the vectors p plus q okay so that being said the second scenario is if the vectors are acting in opposite direction okay then the resultant could either be uh, p minus q or r is going to be equal to q minus p this depends on which of the vectors is greater if P is greater than Q, then the resultant is going to be equal to P minus Q. And if Q is greater than P, then the resultant is going to be equal, is, uh, is going to, be equal to Q minus P. All right, now, the resultant is going to have the same direction as the greater vector. So if P is greater than Q, then the resultant is going to point in the direction of P, and if Q is greater than P, then the resultant is going to point in the direction of Q. Let's graphically look at that. Let's say this is our point of action, then we have vector uh, Q act, uh, acting towards the right, then vector P acting towards the left. By looking at the length of the lines, vector P is greater than Q. So the resultant is going to point towards P, and then the resultant is going to be equal to P minus Q. Okay, now on the other hand, if this is our point of action, and then we have vector Q acting towards the right, uh, being greater than vector P, which is acting towards the left. Okay, in this case, where is the resultant going to point? Can you guess? Okay, your guess may be correct. It's going to point towards Q, and then here your Resultant R, resultant R is going to be equal to Q minus P. So these are just two simple cases. Where you have two vectors acting in the same direction, you simply add to give 
to get the resultant. When they are in opposite direction, you subtract, and then you put into consideration which of the vectors is greater. Okay, we can extend this to more than two vectors uh, in such a way that if you have three, four, five vectors, okay, acting in opposite directions, all the ones acting in one direction will be summed, all the ones acting in the opposite direction will be summed, then a subtraction will now be carried out. So subsequently, we are going to look at examples to illustrate this. So this brings us to the end of lesson two, finding the resultant of two vectors. From lesson three, uh, we are going to also look at finding the resultant of two vectors when the vectors are inclined at an angle to each other. Okay, so do well to subscribe to this channel, hit the like button so that you can get updated anytime new lessons are uploaded on this channel. Oh.